is healthy or can be healthy. Sounds strange, right? Indeed it is. So it turns out obese and healthy at the same time is a real category of people. There are actually obese people, very, very many of them that are perfectly healthy. And research has confirmed that tons of especially young obese people have great blood work, blood work you can't tell apart from anyone else at any size. So we're tempted to be like, wow, holy crap, it is really possible to be obese and healthy. Problem, it does not last. When this research first came out showing that lots of younger obese people can be metabolically very healthy, it caused quite a stir and it should because it required us to potentially re-examine a lot of our assumptions about the relationship between adiposity and health in humans. The thing is, shortly thereafter, similar research came out that mere years later, those same exact metabolically healthy obese people are no longer healthy at all. And the thing is, when you get people who are not obese and they're metabolically healthy, five or 10 years later, the average person in that group is still metabolically healthy. However, with the obese that were metabolically healthy, within five or 10 years, those same people are predictably almost always in much, much worse health. So we could say, well, hold on a second, what happened? And what happened is the following. The behaviors, particularly overeating and underactivity, and eating the kind of junk foods and stuff that make you obese, the behaviors to make you obese and the fat tissue itself, because it all, all sorts of nasty hormonal effects on your body, impose a chronic cumulative cost to your body systems. And that means if you're in a state of obesity, even if you're healthy now, there is an underlying degradatory effect on that health. So there's a cliff sliding down sort of thing, where if you're not obese and you're healthy, you just kind of generally tend to do this for a long time. When health problems get bad with obese people, they usually get real bad because the system is already in a very precarious state. And when it starts to slide in health, a lot of times the rest of it goes. If you happen to be obese and healthy, and if you're watching this, now is the time to think about starting to reduce your level of obesity, to lose some fat so that you can stay healthy in the long run. Because if you're obese in your early 20s and then you get into some pretty decent shape by your mid 20s, you may essentially almost never pay the cost of your earlier obesity and it's just like a fond memory. You can look, oh, I used to be really obese. And then the rest of your life, you're no longer obese and you're super healthy and it lasts for a long time. You don't wanna wait until your health starts to take a tumble because when you start to slide into unhealthy, shit can get really tough to change around. And that's when it becomes really, really bad news. And that's when you start to pay a long-term cost for the stuff. Chronic lifespan reduction can absolutely occur from being obese, but most of the way that occurs is that the obesity starts to harm you. Before it starts to really harm you in the few years that you have of being young, healthy, and obese, some young people who are obese are never healthy, but some people are, that is the time to strike while the iron is hot. That is the time to get into better shapes so that you never have to pay those costs. Because if you're already unhealthy and then you start to try to get no longer obese, to lose weight, to lose fat, that's great. But it would have been much better if you started a little bit earlier. And I know it sounds preachy and all this shit, but it's just fucking true. Lastly, there is this idea that, okay, you're obese, you're unhealthy, and you need to become a skinny mini to be optimally healthy. Bullshit. If you lift weights, especially if you lift weights, because you don't have to lose a ton of weight, but you build a shitload of muscle where you used to carry a lot of fat weight, now you carry a lot of muscle weight instead. You eat well, very healthy, you increase your physical activity, and you eat a bit less junk. And you go from being pretty fucking overweight to significantly less overweight, you go from having very little muscle, which is metabolically a very healthy tissue, to having a lot of muscle. You go from having lots of fat to much less fat. And you go from being obese to being what I have termed scientifically thickalicious, right? Which means you're not skinny as fuck. You may even be overweight on average, but you have so much muscle and you're so physically active and you eat so well that you are healthy as fuck. That means your health will be loads better 
than if you just eat junk food all the time and do nothing, but you, with that baseline of lifting weights, with that baseline of higher levels of physical activity, with most of your foods being healthy foods, you can eat tons of fun foods, have tons of junk, live a fucking awesome life, not have to restrictively diet all the fucking time to be rail thin. You don't have to do cocaine as a full-time job like many skinny models do apparently because that itself is a whole crock of bullshit. If you happen to be considerably overweight and healthy, now is the time to make the change. Highly recommended to start lifting weights. Ease into it. You got all the time in the world. Eating healthier, being more active, and not even so much worried about the scale, but just getting the body fat levels to come down significantly over the years. Getting the muscularity to come up over the years. You are going to be so much better off that it's going to be night and day. An, a very good example of something like this is the story of Ethan Suplee. And if you go to our channel, number one video on our channel, the premier video right on our channel, if you click on there, it's our most popular video ever by views, is the Ethan Suplee dieting journey. And Ethan used to weigh like 530 pounds. That's like highly fucking extreme. Now Ethan weighs like in the 250 pound to 270 pound range. He's not a skinny guy, right? He's not like the guy who fucking played Napoleon Dynamite, okay? He's a thick motherfucker. But he's got so much muscle that he doesn't even have a ton of body fat. And he's got some body fat, sure. But he's 50 trillion times healthier and can live in a balanced state where he gets to eat tons of food. He's not chronically starving all the time. What he did was he raised his level of muscularity, dropped his body fat, changed his behaviors, and now he's in this awesome middle path of being way, way fit and still quite heavy in the grand scheme, but one trillion times better off than he was being way, way, way fatter and inactive and eating tons of junk. So yes, the BS part of this video is, is that being obese and inactive is healthy. It's not. But the silver lining to this video is that you don't have to become a fucking rail thin model to get to 10 trillion times healthier than you used to be. Lifting weights, eating healthier, higher physical activity, and you are well on your way to way, way better outcomes. And if you want to be thinner aesthetically, sweet, that's definitely possible. But if you just want to be someone who lives their life and looks good and feels great, there are so many correct answers of where you could end up, but all of them start with resistance training, healthy eating, higher levels of physical activity. Do you want more advice on how to do that? Shit, that's how a whole fucking channel and company's about. RP, we got all the answers. TM, because we don't have that's just a trademark. In any case, folks, let me know what you think. And if you have any follow-up questions, we can always make more videos attacking individual subjects. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.